Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is acceleration and deceleration control using motor drives. Our objective is to examine how a motor drive coordinates the controlled acceleration and deceleration of a motor in applied load, as well as limit inrush current by adjusting frequency as a function of time. This lecture is predicated on the assumption that viewers watch the volts per hertz control lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. As you are no doubt aware, motor drives are power electronics devices that vary the torque and rotational speed of a motor under their direction by varying the applied voltage magnitude and excitation frequency. This ability to vary both voltage magnitude and excitation frequency directly lends itself to speed control as well as soft starts and soft stops. Motor drives, among their many abilities, often include the ability to ramp up or down applied voltage and magnitude and frequency over user-customizable time periods and patterns, thereby allowing controlled acceleration and deceleration of the motor and applied load, as well as a dramatic reduction of inrush current. As we learned in the above reference lecture, a motor drive varies not only excitation frequency, but also applied voltage. Both quantities must be varied for excitation frequencies below the base frequency because the inductive reactance or impedance of the motor windings and counter electromotive force, both oppositional forces, are substantially reduced at lower excitation frequencies and lower rotational speeds. By reducing voltage magnitude at the same time as frequency, current can be kept inside the intended operational range. This relationship of volts per hertz control can assume many different profiles, the most basic being linear. A linear volts per hertz profile for a generic motor drive applies zero volts at zero hertz, and assuming a 60 hertz base frequency, full voltage at 60 hertz. Beyond the base frequency, motor drives typically flatline applied voltage at 100% up to the maximum frequency. For excitation frequencies below the base frequency, applied voltage is linearly proportional to excitation frequency. For example, if one was to dial the excitation frequency down to half the base frequency, or 30 Hz, applied voltage would also be proportionally reduced to 50%. Note the graphs of volts per Hz, as implied by their titles, are graphs of applied voltage as a function of excitation frequency. As I alluded during the introduction, motor drives can perform soft starts and stops by varying both applied voltage and excitation frequency over time. Note the dramatic emphasis I'm placing on the qualities voltage, frequency, and time. This suggests a third dimension needs to be added for the purposes of today's discussion. This may seem overly complicated for two-dimensional thinkers, however it's actually pretty easy if you just use two separate graphs. For example, consider a motor drive with a simple linear volts per hertz profile and another plot of frequency as a function of time, where excitation frequency is ramped from zero to the base frequency over an adjustable acceleration ramp up time of let's say 10 seconds. Assuming a 60 Hz base frequency, this means while excitation frequency is ramped from 0 to 60 Hz over 10 seconds, voltage is also ramped from 0 to 100% over the same 10 second period. At 5 seconds into the ramp up event, excitation frequency would be 30 Hz and applied voltage would be 50%. When the ramp up event finishes at 10 seconds, Excitation frequency flatlines at 60 Hz, as does applied voltage at 100%. This 10 second acceleration period is therefore characterized by both linearly increasing applied voltage and linearly increasing excitation frequency. One would anticipate the motor and driven load to be comparatively gently accelerated during this 10 second acceleration period and inrush current substantially reduced in comparison to a full voltage or across the line electromechanical motor starter that rudely jerks the motor and driven load to a start with a burst of full voltage at full excitation frequency. A graph of line current for an old school electromechanical across the line full voltage starter appears next to one making use of a motor drive where applied voltage and excitation frequency are both linearly ramped up during a 10 second acceleration period. Note the dramatic surge of inrush current for the electromechanical across the line full voltage starter and note the conspicuous absence of the same for the motor drive. Not only is inrush current dramatically reduced using this method, whatever load is being driven by the gently accelerated motor isn't yanked in half. The ramping of applied voltage and frequency is not exclusive to soft starts, 
but can also be used to soft stop a motor with a driven load for the purposes of controlled deceleration. What is almost a mirror image of our previous example, consider a motor drive with a simple linear volts per hertz profile, a linear acceleration ramp up profile, and another plot where excitation frequency is ramped down from base frequency to zero over an adjustable deceleration ramp down time of let's again say 10 seconds. Given a running motor at full voltage and full speed, a stop command would initiate the deceleration ramp down event. This means while excitation frequencies ramp from 60 Hz down to 0 Hz over 10 seconds, voltage is also ramped down from 100 to 0 percent over the same 10 second period. At 5 seconds into the ramp down event, excitation frequency would be 30 Hz and applied voltage would be 50 percent. When the ramp down event finishes at 10 seconds, both excitation frequency and applied voltage reach zero. The motor and driven load glide to a controlled stop. We'll examine the coordination of motor drives and friction brakes that positively lock a de-energized motor in place in later lectures. This ramping down deceleration event, if you think about it, is kind of like a timer executing the off delay function and that the output will remain asserted for a measurable period after the controlling input has disappeared. For obvious reasons, we might need to override an ongoing deceleration event for immediate emergency stop purposes. Additionally, deceleration events often need to consider over-voltage protection mechanisms because a driven load with established rotational inertia can at times turn the motor into a generator when excitation frequency is ramped down too quickly. We'll examine coordination of accessory friction brakes, emergency overrides, and over-voltage protection mechanisms in later lectures. For now, we'll assume ideal conditions and neglect these complications. Acceleration and deceleration ramp up and ramp down times are often user customizable within a given range. For example, consider a motor drive with the same simple linear volts per hertz profile where excitation frequencies ramp from zero to the base frequency over a relatively snappy five seconds. As previously, when the run command is asserted, excitation frequency would be ramped from zero to 60 hertz only this time over 5 seconds. Voltage would also be ramped from 0 to 100% over the same 5 second period. Whatever driven load is attached to the motor is briskly accelerated during this much shorter and steeper acceleration period. If the deceleration period was also adjusted to a relatively snappy 5 seconds, a stop command would initiate the 5 second deceleration ramp down. During the brisk deceleration, while excitation frequency is ramped from 60 down to 0 Hz over 5 seconds, Voltage would also be ramped from 100 down to 0% over the same brisk 5 second period. When the ramp down event finishes at 5 seconds, both excitation frequency and applied voltage reach zero. The motor and driven load glide to a more abrupt stop given the shorter deceleration period. For the purposes of comparison, a graph of line current for a motor drive using a linear volts per hertz ratio and a linear 10 second ramp up time appears next to one employing a linear volts per hertz ratio and a snappier linear 5 second ramp up time. Note both plots illustrate both linearly increasing applied voltage and excitation frequency, only the one with a shorter acceleration time does so more rapidly. This analysis is a little bit more complicated when the motor drive is capable of using more complicated volts per hertz profiles, such as this dual slope torque boost volts per hertz profile, however not impossible. Assuming a base frequency of 60 hertz, and a plus 20% voltage boost at 30% of the base frequency, or 18 Hz, and the same linear acceleration profile where excitation frequency is ramped up to 100% of the base frequency over an adjustable acceleration time of let's say 10 seconds, one can calculate applied voltage and excitation frequency at specific times. For example, the linear frequency as a function of time plot shows it takes 3 seconds to ramp up excitation frequency from 0 to 18 hertz, or 30% of base frequency, whereas the volts per hertz plot shows this simultaneously result in applied voltage going from 0 all the way to 50% over the same 3 seconds. The steeper ramp up of voltage in comparison to frequency is what results in a brief burst of current capable of developing a little bit more torque at these lower speeds then takes the remaining 7 seconds for excitation frequency to go from 18 to 60 Hz, at the same time applied voltage goes from 50 to 100%. For the purposes of comparison, a graph of line current for a motor drive using a linear volts per Hz ratio and a linear 10 second ramp up time appears next to one employing a dual slope torque boost volts per Hz ratio and a linear 10 second ramp up time. 
No, both plots illustrate both linearly increasing frequency. However, the one employing the dual slope torque boost profile shows a notable boost of current at low excitation frequencies, designed to break the static friction of a load with large inertia. Note that not all acceleration and deceleration frequency as a function of time patterns are linear. Consider, for example, an S-shaped frequency as a function of time profile. S-shaped curves are commonly used for applied loads that need to be briskly accelerated at high speed and then rapidly decelerated to a stop. The classic example of an S-shaped acceleration or deceleration profile is the feeling you might get in an elevator traveling between floors. As previously, a user ordinarily can customize the time it takes to execute the S-shaped acceleration or deceleration period. Depending upon the particular motor drive employed, more or less acceleration deceleration patterns and more or less options may be available for specific applications. For the purposes of comparison, a graph of line current for a motor drive using a linear volts per hertz ratio and a linear 10 second ramp up time appears next to one employing a linear volts per hertz ratio and an S-shaped 10 second ramp up time. Note both plots illustrate linearly increasing voltage. However, the one employing the S-shaped acceleration profile shows frequency starts low and then rapidly transitions to full speed. All right, that's about it for acceleration and deceleration ramping events for motor drives. In closing, I present all five plots of line current for the different starting methods for your consideration. One, an old school electromechanical across the line full voltage starter exhibiting constant frequency and massive inrush. The second, a motor drive with a linear volts per hertz profile and a linear 10 second ramp up time exhibiting controlled current at a steadily increasing frequency and a substantially gentler rate of acceleration. The third, a motor drive with a linear volts per hertz profile with a shorter linear 5 second ramp up time exhibiting a more aggressive yet still manageable rate of acceleration. The fourth, a motor drive with a dual slope torque boost volts per hertz profile and a linear 10 second ramp up time exhibiting a notable current boost at low speeds designed to break the static friction of a heavy load at rest. And finally, the fifth, a motor drive with a linear volts per hertz profile and an S-shaped 10 second ramp up time exhibiting controlled current and a slower initial rate of frequency increase, followed by a more aggressive increase as the acceleration and bent unfolds. Some of the distinctions between these methods may be subtle and escape a casual inspection, but it should be exceedingly obvious that by varying both the applied voltage and excitation frequency over a user customizable time period, a motor drive can soft start a motor such that inrush and mechanical stresses are substantially minimized in comparison to an electromechanical cross the line full voltage starter. Keep in mind, all these plots are using the same vertical scale of 1 amp per division and a horizontal scale of 0.5 seconds per division. The inrush is off the charts for the electromechanical across the line full voltage starter and peaking out at maybe only 1.5-ish amps for all the other methods with the exception of the torque boost that's specifically designed to produce a controllable temporary boost of current at low speeds. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at ramping events for motor drives. We learned that motor drives can ramp up or down applied frequency over user customizable time periods and profiles such that the motor and applied load undergo controlled acceleration and deceleration and inrush current is substantially reduced. Additionally, we learned applied frequency as a function of time must take into account the volts per hertz profile employed by the motor drive. Finally, we examined the differences between linear and S-shaped acceleration and deceleration curves. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.